first penguin. Not sure what's going on. Oh, he's going on a penguin crossing. This is what Rob does, he loves it. He wants me to learn. Exciting. Our first sight, our first sighting of Antarctica. but I can't get enough. This is our first stop. We were fortunate enough to be a day early. The weather was good to us. We got here a day early, so it's a landing. We went, it wasn't scheduled. <laughs> hey Bridge, can you believe you're here? I'm on Antarctica. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I'm on Antarctica. yeah we can. <laughs> Unbelievable. Kind of got the noisy little buckets down there. He's after food. Stunning. Can't get enough. Amazing. Guys. Yeah, ship. Look at that. Man, oh man, look at that. My hand is freezing. So.
go. Are we all right here? Hey man, what happened? And they also eat happy feet. You know, it's we. You know, we're a very emotional species. You know, we um, we think penguins are cute, and we think leopard seals are ugly. Therefore, leopard seals are bad. Penguins are good. It doesn't work like that. The seal doesn't know he's cute or ugly. Leopard seal. I mean, the penguin doesn't know he's cute. I mean, this is just how the ecosystem unfolds. This is just all part of the food chain. And leopard seals are also big. I mean, you're thinking ring seals, right? You're thinking a hundred pound seal. These guys are over a thousand pounds. And this was a massive female leopard seal that, that Goran's in the water with. So we arrived in Antarctica and ending the head off this penguin, shaking it from side to side. These are the feet here trailing behind. She whips it back and forth to turn it inside out so she can eat the meat. And it was pretty hor horrific. There, was chunk, there were chunks of meat in the water. She came up underneath the boat. She rammed the penguin underneath the hull of the boat, almost knocked us in the water. We had to sit down. She was longer than our 12-foot-long Zodiac boat. And that's when Yoran, my guide, said, it's time for you to get in the water, yeah. And I said, <laughs> and, I, and he's just a big, strong, burly Swede and very strong guy. And, you know, he's an authoritative individual. And I was like, you know, forget that, except I probably uh, used a different word <laughs> starting with the letter F. And he's still terrified. I mean, this is a big, big animal. And this is the first thing she does. She comes oh shooting gosh. right over to me and she engulfs my camera and, and inside her entire mouth. And, you know, again, the photographer instinct kicks in. Well, I mean, here we are. We might as well shoot. But Yoran gave me great advice. He said, if you get scared, you close your eyes and she'll go away, yeah? So, <laughs> he really did say that. The other advice he gave me was stay with the penguin, yeah? He kept yelling that. I could hear him, you know, I'm breathing in my snorkel, my adrenaline's going. He's yelling, stay with the penguin, because this leopard seal is killing penguins. And he said, if I stay with them, I'll get my shots. Well, the most amazing thing happened. She did this threat display for a few minutes, and then she completely relaxed. And I didn't know what was going to happen next. And she left. I thought, well, the show's over. And she came back, and she had a penguin by the feet, and she held it, and it was flapping, and she let it go. Penguin swam towards me and took off. She went after it and caught it, came back and did it again. She did this about ten times. And it dawned on me, she's trying to feed me a penguin. And I was like, no, it can't be. But I thought, well, I'll just keep shooting. I mean, this picture here was, you know, not a fluke. I mean, I had so many chances to get this shot, because she kept trying to feed me this penguin. And I swear as she swam by me to get the penguin that just swam away, she had this dejected look on her face, and she'd look over at me as she'd swim by, grab the penguin, and do it again. And the biologist in me doesn't want to anthropomorphize these situations, but that's what it really appeared to be at the time. And then that didn't work. I couldn't catch a swimming penguin, so she grabbed the penguin, and she made it really tired, wore it down, got it nice and exhausted, and then she kind of bobbed <laughs> towards me in this vertical position, and she gently let the penguin go, and it swam away, and she went and did this a few times. That didn't work. So she did this other thing where she got a penguin and she got extremely tired now. And she ate every penguin she did this to. You felt bad for the penguins, but this is what she does. They play with their food anyways. So here is she. She's on her back. She's sliding down an iceberg in these really sort of sexy ballet-like poses where she's sort of twirling around with the penguin. And then she'd come around like this, and then she'd present it to me like that. <laughs> like that. And I would sit there looking at this penguin like, I don't know what to do with this penguin. And 
and that didn't work. So she was getting frustrated. So she got me dead penguins. She would drown them, and she would swim right up to me and just give me dead penguins. And then she'd just stop sometimes with a dead penguin floating there in front of me and just stare at me like, are you for real? <laughs> This is all happening in two days. Can you imagine from the sheer terror of this animal and you're on in the boat going, I told you so, yeah? And then this seal staring at me. I mean, this is all unfolding very quickly. And that didn't work. I didn't touch the dead penguin. So she grabbed penguins and she'd flip them on top of my head. So now I have penguins on top of my head and I'm sitting there just photographing and you've got the feet hanging in front and I'm just not moving, I'm just shooting. Now this is every photographer's dream to have a top predator like this trying to force feed you. I mean, that's, you know, I thought we were going to fail, fail this story. We ended up shooting this entire story in two days because of this. And then she started to show frustration, and I started to get worried. She'd come up to me, and she'd blow bubbles, which is a, sign, a threat display in the wild world. But she'd just blow bubbles and go back to trying to feed me, so I don't know what she was really trying to say. And then this one time, she did this deep, guttural jackhammer sound. She rolled upside down on her back, and she did this really deep, and I could feel it you vibrate through my whole body and I was like, uh oh, I'm about to get hit. You know, she's upset now. And what had happened was another leopard seal had snuck in behind me and she did the threat display. She chased it away. It was another big female. She chased it away and she grabbed its penguin and brought its penguin back and gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> this is mine. Really? <laughs> This is Ice cream and pasta. Mm. <laughs> what do you think, Bridge? Yeah, you're not going to enjoy that. Oh my god, <laughs> Garlic and caramel. Oh, you eat it separately. I do eat it together. <laughs> yeah, but the ice cream is melt sort of melting into the... <laughs> well, there, at the end there might be like a squirrely moment. <laughs> Maybe it might be better. And then at the when end, behind the pit, there's a again. We are always running for the thrill of it, thrill of it. Always pushing up the hill, searching for the thrill of it. On and on and on we are, calling out and out again. Never looking down, I'm just seeing all of what's in front of me. One, one, one 
Stuka. What was a bit more dead devil in the cave? <laughs> they all came and then the Stuka. <laughs> They look behind you, they might be coming behind you. They're under the boat. It's very cute and go. One's a scary cat, then they all go. <laughs> When two people come to join, I can feel it now. When two people become one, is it real? When two people become one, I can feel it. You need to flap your wings a bit more. Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of whales lazing in the summer sun. Hey Bridge, go high. Hey. <laughs> hmm. Look at that. Here we go. 
Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, the other one's up. <laughs> Just right now? Yeah, seals. He's getting onto the iceberg. Oh, no, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> that yeah, still have which from? Bridge. That's it. Hey. Maria. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's got a drink. Of course you have. <laughs> no, I haven't. I've got a. Well, I, I wasn't talking. <laughs> I was going to say no, I haven't. <laughs> Where are you going? up into the dining room because it was too cold down there. It's the highest mountain of this part of the peninsula. On our port side we have Booth Island rising to 980 meters above sea level and above our, and our starboard side is Antarctic mainland and the mountain here is at 1200 meters above sea level. Meanwhile below us we have several hundred meters of water so very dramatic relief here. Yeah. Wow. What was that mountain in the distance, Matt? Um, Mount. This is the Lamar. That's poo. That's Antarctica. It's just too much. I thought we were done for the day, but we have to take it. This is so incredible. Okay, okay. We're on Palmer Station. One of the things that is responsible for is taking care of the hot tub. <laughs> uh, so on a daily basis, the doctor comes by. And during the winter time, when the population gets down to just the support staff, they cut one of those positions where there's just one cook and they only do like lunch and dinner. And everybody's on their own for breakfast. Uh, the cooks are some of the hardest working folks on station. Unlike the rest of them, it's like oh. <laughs> Again, we're on shore. Inside the volcano, which is deceptive. Deception Island, isn't it, Miss? Yep. We got heaps and heaps of seals. There's rejection. That wasn't too fast, but my hand's freezing. <laughs> There's a big bull.
If you mind it, please. I'll have to do that, guys. I feel hot enough. Do you? I'm warm enough, yeah. <laughs> Not when you get in there, you go. I know. Oh, they're doing it! Woo! <laughs> oh, my! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, my. They are braving it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, are you a swimmer? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh, you have to run. Watch that run. Tail. You have to <laughs> run. Do it, quick. Oh, and you're oh. 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 have livened up a bit <laughs> it's uh, 50 knot winds out there On the bridge, with bridge. Yeah, <laughs> 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 
It's just easier. Yeah. You're, you're, cool. You're going to buy time. It's easier to go directly to the source. And then you start to get the ball rolling before you get to the shore tomorrow. And then follow up. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's my feeling. Yeah, we have access to Wi-Fi here, so... He doesn't. Hey! Finish it! Oh! Yes, of course it is! Get <laughs> 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 away, Mark! Mark! Concierge! Concierge! Hey! That boss! <laughs> We're gonna have to destroy this, by the way. It's gonna be the cat off the seats. Can't be connected. You gotta get a biscuit shot. I can't do that. And this is the lounge we hang out most afternoons for a little recap on the day. And this is something that not every ship does. They don't go to new places every voyage. This was a special event for us too. And not every team is capable of doing these things. But the leader of our team is someone who is capable, who is willing to do these things. And that's why we're so lucky to have sailed to Antarctica with Captain Sergei Nesterov. Special. It's, <laughs> I'm not special. I'm working, working together with my crew, working together with my family, working together with, uh, with you two, because uh, my skills and my experience and give to the people because I have very, very great job. It's uh, what means my job. My needs job I make in your dreams is really. Yeah. It's great Woo! job in the world. And it is, of course, we are, I promise you for the, this voyage will be best. I think from one from the best. We are doing everything interesting. Also, you've been in uh, kindly condition, and Drake. Also, yesterday you have been something not friendly. <laughs> uh, rock and roll, Drake. <laughs> but we are survive. We are still alive. Uh, we survive. We are happy. We have been in Antarctica. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Go down. Woo! <laughs> Where's the vodka? I have no idea. So we're near so we're near the central. Near where? Near the central. So I have no idea. So yeah. I'm there for four days. I'm certainly for a day after. I think it was the Wednesday. Oh. Talking to myself 
will I see again? We are always running for the thrill of it, thrill of it, always pushing up the hill, searching for the thrill of it. On and on and on we are calling out and out again, never looking down, I'm just seeing all of what's in front of me. Is it real when two people become one? I thought I'd never see the love you found in me. It's changing all time oh i'm living in a rhythm where the rhythm's working over time we are always running for the thrill of it thrill of it always pushing up the hill searching for the thrill of it on and on and on we are calling out and out again never looking down i'm just seeing all of what's in front of me is it real when two people become one? I can feel it now when two people become one. Catch me, I'm falling. 